I'm many things. I'm a trail runner for the North Face, and I'm also a running coach, also a scientist, and I'm also an author. Science nerd, I love it so much. So when I'm like running through the mountains, I always think of the history. I was actually in graduate school. I was getting my master's degree for neuroscience and physiology. And trail running was this place where I felt like just myself and I felt that I could just go and explore. And the more I ran, the more curious I became. So I grew up in the mountains of Colorado, the Rocky Mountains, and as a kid, um, we just took these epic road trips. So for me, the mountains, they just represent freedom. It's a place I can always go, and it's a place where I can always work through and honestly become better and grow as a human being. Life is so much more than just a career. You know, running trails is, and competing is actually, now it's become a career, but to me it's, it's so much more than that because I feel like it feeds my soul. And I think exploring and staying curious, that's the one thing that can keep you young and, and, and hungry for every adventure that life throws at you. Um, I mean, I've gone through a ton of injuries in my athletic career, which have separated me from, you know, exploring the mountains. And so I've had to embrace those lows in order to kind of get back and experience those highs. In 2017, I was on the World Skyrunning Series, very technical, mountainous, steep terrain. It's some of my favorite types of, of running to do. I was heading to Norway, to Tromsø, Norway, to compete in the Humperokken Sky Race. It was a very technical, iconic race. I was winning, actually, the, the World Skyrunning Series at that point. And this race was kind of like, you know, I didn't have to even win. I just had to, you know, finish it in order to, you know, keep my standings. So when I, when I started the race, I was having a great day. I was doing pretty well. One of the parts of the course was this epic ridge line. It was a hump rock and ridge. You basically have to use your hands to navigate the train because it's pretty steep and technical. The last thing I remember was one minute I was running and the next I was in the air and I was falling. I remember hearing my own voice kind of saying to myself calmly that, you know, this is it, like you, you're going to die. In total, I fell 150 feet. I'd broken a total of 14 bones. I'd broken my back, both of my arms, both of my feet, um, five ribs. I had twisted my ankles very severely. Um, and I had ruptured a major ligament in my right foot. The doctor said I would never run again because of the injury in my foot. I also just felt stuck mentally and emotionally. The one thing was that I felt that this freedom to explore, this freedom of movement, it had been taken away from me. So the accident, it gave me an opportunity to, to practice patience and to really slow down and to enjoy the simple things in life, whether it's just driving down the road and taking in the scenery or enjoying coffee with friends. It was more than just a physical recovery. It was an emotional recovery. It was a finding of, of self again. I wanted to share my story and I wanted to show others that resilience is possible, to show that a situation where all odds are stacked against you, it doesn't have to be that way. I wanted to be that source of inspiration, that, that challenge to that notion that you know, this is impossible. The book is more than just a story about how to return to running from, you know, my injuries. It's, it's about resilience. I mean, spoiler alert, I'm, I was able to get back to running and not only running, but running and competing in, at an elite level again. You know, one of the ways I was able to do this was to, you know, go on road trips again. And that's something I love to do. It's how I train. And the best way to do that for me is to explore new places that I've never been before. And that's where the Dave and Matt vans comes into play for me. The van takes it to the next level. I mean, not only do I have a portable kitchen, which I can, you know, stop and have snacks and meals because as a professional athlete, I'm, you know, hungry all the time. <laughs> and, but I also have a portable office. So, you know, I'm not just an athlete. I'm also a coach. I'm constantly talking to people, updating training plans. <laughs>
The thing that's changed the most in my approach to training and, and racing as I'm competing again is how I need to recover. And the van also allows for me to have a place where I can roll out, where I can do recovery. So for me, it, the van is the best of both worlds. I get to have an office and I also can go explore new places. And so I had this idea, I can't be in two places at once. Like I can't train at home and be these new places that I wanna be. And so what better way to, you know, head out on the road and interact with the community than, you know, a van book tour. And so what I'm using the van for is I'm supporting the training that I have. So visiting some of my favorite, you know, mountain ranges in the West. And um, I'm also stopping at local running stores and local bookstores along the way and, you know, having a van book tour. It really feeds both parts of my life that I love, the exploration and then the community and the social aspects. I have this belief that my best athletic days are ahead of me. And in doing so, it's encouraging me to try new things, to try new races. It's really holding on to that hope and that belief and working towards these goals that I have. And if I had to share one piece of advice for young girls or you know anyone who ha is aspiring to a big goal or dream is just to keep asking yourself the question, is this something that I love? And if it's something that you love, then there's no sacrifice that's too small to pursue that goal. And there's nothing that can get in the way of it. It's not straightforward. So kind of embrace the ups and downs. And even if you have a plan, it's not gonna to go to plan, but that doesn't mean that you can't keep trying. And the most important thing to remember is to enjoy the process because you never know what you're capable of unless you try.